So let's go ahead. We're going to jump in tonight and we're going to be talking about, amen, where we've been dealing with there's grace for this place. And now uh, we stopped off dealing with Romans 1. Um, yeah, Romans chapter 1, verses 16 to 32 this is where we say we're going to go to and talk about this because we can't be ashamed of the gospel. You know, can't be ashamed of the gospel. What does all of that look like? And we want to look at it relevant to where things are today. So we ask you to go ahead and study and look into this. And uh, so we could have some dialogue about it tonight. Okay, I pray that you pray that you've done that. Amen. So let's begin there. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so Romans 1, 16, um, says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And we talked about salvation is a continuation of us being saved or or it, it continues with God saved us from our past. Amen. He's saving us from our present. Uh, and uh, because of our salvation, we also have future salvation. And so we got to know that. So there's grace for whatever we find ourselves in, but we believe. We got to know that is the gospel is what we believe in that is what's going to save us is the power of God unto salvation okay do we understand fundamentally that um that principle there that is continues it's not a one-time event you can't treat your salvation like it was an event because life happens it's going to continue to happen okay this I for me, yeah. um, I'm learning. And the more that we have these discussions and the more that I study, I realize that, you know, this is for past, present, and future. So everything yeah. that I am to experience, um, anything that arises, I am already protected and saved and delivered from those. But I have to be conscious, aware of that, Mm -hmm. and not forget that mm -hmm. and to expect that and to activate it by reading and confessing it yes so i have i have to participate in that mm -hmm. yeah so that is something that as i've studied you know and went back over this i was like it's crucial because when you're not actively participating in it and expecting it and um activating your faith, mm -hmm. some things fall through the through the cracks and it's mm -hmm. not on God. It's right. on me. It's, mm -hmm. it's it's my part. God has already done his part. Christ has already done his part. The Holy mm -hmm. Spirit wants to continue to help you. But if we don't engage in that process, then mm -hmm. we will not experience what the scripture says we can have. Yeah, that's good. And know that life is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's happening. It's, it's continuing. And uh, God has made provision for whatever occurs in our present and our future, as well as our past. And that's a total package right there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, Mother Irma. I what I what I noticed about it was that, like Stephanie said, I agree with everything that she said, but I was also looking at at the time that this was spoken and the time that it was given. And it's and it was like okay, first, you know, it was to the, to the Jews first and then to the Greeks. That, it was like it's a done deal as far as I've done this for you, this is yours, you have this, but it is a continuation. You, you pick it up, you work with it, but I've done it. It's, it's, it's when he was doing the finished works. This was a piece of finished work. He had done it. This was given to us. 
You know, we receive if we want to receive, but it was done. He already offered it, gave it. Yeah. And so this piece of work is done. We've got to pick it up and we've got to take it, like Steph said, not fall through the cracks with certain things. But this this reminded me of the things that were finished. This was a finished work to yeah. me. You gotta you gotta know you're finished too. He mm-hmm. cleared your yeah. end from beginning. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you're st- out. Uh, manifestation of all that you are in him but he declared your end from beginning and exactly uh, yeah so he had a complete thought about you he didn't have a halfway thought he's not making things up along the way no and that's why we got to learn to leave these things to be true by the power of the gospel Uh and and then he says that this for therein in verse 17 that the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith it will become a revelation or a piece of understanding um, uh, from faith to faith mm-hmm. so we have to continue to grow in our faith okay just to know the promise and know the promise is yours but not have the promise manifest in your life it requires faith to have the promise manifested yes yes and that's what we've got to understand we must participate in is in its manifestation Mm -hmm. okay and it requires faith to do that for we are saved by grace through faith faith. the formula doesn't change no no it requires faith okay faith is the currency of the kingdom Mm-hmm. faith is what pleases god and listen to this faith is what allows you to experience god yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay some people are stuck on just being excited about and i, I would call that hope mm-hmm. on knowing about the promise yes okay but to me as i read this scripture the real prize is to experience the promise. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I call that getting some get right. <laughs> I mean, it, like, like uh, Bishop Joseph uh, uh, Wallington saying, it's so easy to love him. You know, it becomes easy to love God when you're experiencing God. You know, but for him just to be a, a myth or or just a hope, um, that doesn't produce much motivation. Okay, Amen. That's good. And then it says in verse seventeen too. This is this is this is a powerful statement. The just shall live by faith. Okay, and when we look at that word "live," it's not talking about just exist. One, one definition says that their definition to enjoy real life, to have true life worthy of the name, active, blessed, Come endless on. in the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. Come on. This is the advantage that you have being a born again believer and believing uh, and, and not being ashamed of the gospel knowing that it's through that gospel, the power of God is released in you to enjoy real life, okay? To have true life and it being worthy of the name, active and blessed, endless in the kingdom, huh? Also produces character. Yes, Stephanie, come on. I was just gonna say, because I was looking at it too, Bishop, and it said to be fresh, strong, yeah. Efficient, yeah. active, powerful. Yeah. It's there full of vigor. Yeah. Is that how you said it? Yeah, vigor. vigor. Yeah. Okay. Man, think of those things, man. That's what the gospel does, Deacon Terry. And so when you know these things and understand these things, uh, it, it's, it's not easy to submit. I mean, it's not hard to submit to it. Okay, but you cannot, as we as we studied, how can they hear 
without a preacher and how can they preach except they be sent okay except they have because you won't you won't talk about this with any type of fervency if you hadn't experienced it for yourself if it hadn't liberated you if it hadn't produced this joy this vigor okay this real life for you in other words let's put it in our mission statement that the kingdom of God has become your reality, okay? Now it's your reality, and so you talk different. One of my students on last night, as I was talking about the word of God, they said, I want to be able to talk about the word of God like you talk about the word of God. You talk about it with such excitement, with such power in your voice. I said, that same power will be in your voice when you believe it and when you experience it for yourself, okay? It's no different, it's no different. It's, this is for all of us, okay? But we, 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 we've got to understand, as Stephanie was talking about, we gotta, we've got to participate in our salvation. Hey, mom, <laughs> we gotta participate in our salvation, okay? This ought to encourage you to participate in your salvation. And again, that salvation is, is your daily experiencing God and living life uh, uh, or, or what, what this word says, real life, okay? Yeah. Come on, anybody else on that? This is good. The just shall live by faith. I was just gonna say in in moments like that when you read that like statements that come from God to you like I remember when God told um minister Deborah I'm restoring your youth I'm restoring mm -hmm. unto you your youth so it's like God will say stuff to you like that in these mm -hmm. moments like when mm -hmm. you read this and, and then he'll make these statements and you'd be like oh you know for instance for me God was like I'm going to preserve you. Like, you're going to be so preserved. And I was like, mm -hmm. ooh. <laughs> you know, yeah. people already say, you don't look like you're such and such age. I say, thank you. I appreciate that, you know. Right. And so if if that's now, it's like, I'm not, I'm, I'm getting older, but I'm not getting old. I'm getting faithful. Like, I'm growing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just, it, it make you change your whole perception about you know aging and growing because you're walking with God like before we came into this session you were teaching us like how to walk with God mm -hmm. you know if God is time and I'm walking with time like I ain't got nothing but time being I mean I don't know it just it just puts you in a whole nother place and you be like oh, okay God I see what you're doing yeah but when he saved you from your past mm -hmm. he also preserved you Okay. That's why the saved, those that belong to God, they, 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 they mature gracefully because they're under the grace of God. They don't look as old as they are numerically. They still look good. They still have vigor. Come on now. Yeah, they do. Okay. And it's because preservation is a part of your salvation package. He preserves us. Okay. The wages of sin is death. That's why you can look at a, at a young person who, who is living a very, uh, I don't know, rigorous life. Uh, one that that ha has no regard of, of of or respect for God and his principles and what's right or wrong, just just living a wild life. They can look very old and look very tired. And they tell you, oh, I'm 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 26. And you be like, Lord Jesus, honey, you 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 look like you're about 56. And we say, and we've said things, we've made up things like they look like they rolled hard and put up wet. You ever heard that saying about, about, about they ride a horse hard and then they put them up wet. They don't give them a chance to cool down. And it causes them to, 
you know, to not grow old gracefully. All right. That's what sin does. Sin accelerates the death process. And it'll show up physically, show up spirit, spirit, okay? Start looking old. But then salvation, amen, accelerates preservation. So now you can be 60 and look good, okay? I'm 58. I still look good to be 58, okay? Yeah, we don't have to be all over the place because we've gotten, we've aged, okay? Because we're preserved, okay? And we can believe that and we can hold true to that, all right? We don't have to say, well, I guess my, all my hair don't fall out and I'm, I'm, I'm on this. No, no, no. You don't have to believe that way. You can say, I'm going to do well. I'm going to aid well. Yeah. yeah, praise God. This is good. So we live by faith. This has to be what we believe. It's the power of God unto salvation for those who believe, right? Now listen, verse, 9, verse 18, it begins to take on some, some greater understanding because the apostle Paul was telling them, um, in Romans chapter 10, as we went through that, y'all got a zeal, but not according to knowledge. And so here in Romans 1, he's talking about getting them justified, getting to the place of, of, of understanding what's going wrong and how to get things right. Okay. I'm not breaking up, Emma. No. Okay. 18 says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in righteousness, okay? And so the wrath of God is, is anger, okay? His anger, his, dis, his, his display of not being pleased with the way things are going, okay? And about the wrath of God, not the wrath of man. He's talking about the wrath of God, Mother Irma. Okay, it it revealed. It, it will be made known. Okay, from heaven, just like if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their ways, I'll forgive their sin, their ungodliness, their unrighteousness. Hear from heaven, and I will what heal the land. Am I right? So if we were to look at, you know, the things that are going on, we've got to say, Lord, are our ways pleasing you? Or is what's going on, the wrath of God being allowed and that people are experiencing that to go on? Uh, and he goes on and he talks about what causes that wrath to come forth. The ungodliness, it says this in verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God that showed it unto them. So if we are to, to, the Bible says, and you shall know the truth and the truth free. Okay. You agree with it? Jesus brought grace and truth. We know his word is truth. Okay. It known unto us, it then becomes the measuring rod of whether or not God allows heaven to reveal his, his displeasure with us. Think of yourself raising a child. You start training that child, right? You start teaching that child right from wrong, all uh, the way to do things, right? Uh, how to tend to things and all of that, how to take care of things, you know, a lot of things. And then uh, I pray that uh, when those instructions are not followed, first you make sure they're understood, and then you make sure that they're followed. And when they're not followed, there has to be repercussions, or otherwise there's no correction. Oh, my and if they continue with no correction, all right, they never, they never 
one, please what your expectations are, right? Nor do they experience life to the magnitude in which they could experience it. Is that a truth? So do you think God, the father of all and who was in all, and we're all his children, okay, can allow us just to do whatever we want to do and there be no, no response to his displeasing of our behavior. Y'all talk to me now. I want us to talk. I'm not trying to throw this on you. I want us to look in the word of God and to come to a place of understanding because we need to help communicate this with people. You know, you know, talking about uh, it's the president, uh, it's the police. Uh, I don't know. There's a scapegoat for everything, right? But the police can't can't uh, can't uh, form hurricanes. The police and and the president can't cause fires to burn that they can't put out. Okay, I know with the pandemic. They're trying to make like it was something the government did, that the government did this thing. And that's why this virus is out here. And, and you got all these different conspiracies uh, going on with all of that. Am I right? But how many know God is sovereign? The sovereignty of God is, it said, that I have the authority to do whatever I want to when I want. And if I allow some things, it could be because I'm displeased with things. Because quite honestly, the virus could be gone tomorrow. The fires could go out in the morning. The waters could subside in the next five minutes. Are you understand what I'm saying? Because God is sovereign. However, if God is trying to, and I'm not preaching a, 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 a God that will kill you. Are you hearing me? That's what I'm preaching. I'm just telling you, at some point in time, mankind has to take responsibility for his behavior. Am I right? Jesus, as you said, Mother Irma, the finished work of the cross, Jesus then died and paid for the sins before we knew any better. Am I right? He died and paid for all of the sins that, that occurred in the garden where Adam lost dominion and power and authority. Jesus came back, took it back. He got power over death and the grave. He got all power in his hand. He's trying to give it to us now, right? This gospel is being, has been written, is being preached. Come on now. It's being lived in a lot of cases. Am I right? But yet and still to recognize that God is God and we have need to humble ourselves. If my people will, what you call by an angel, humble themselves and pray, humble ourselves and acknowledge the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord and submit to God's ways and his every bow every tongue's going to confess that jesus is lord okay i don't care what's what somebody didn't put in your head in your mind you you the black king you the you the you the israelites you this and the other listen jesus christ is king of kings and lord of lords and at the end of the day there's no other name you call upon and be saved from the wrath on now that will come from the wages of sin Okay, let's just be clear about it. Now, you may not believe in God. That's okay. But I hate to have an aha moment when it's too late. We still good? Y'all hearing me well? Okay. So what I'm talking about is, is here the Apostle Paul is teaching them. And he says, uh, he showed these things unto them. But yet, they're acting as though they don't know anything. And then here in verse 20 says, 
of the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, they are without excuse. You know, we have a saying, what's understood don't have to be discussed. <laughs> this is in essence what God is saying. <laughs> Let's be clear, amen. Let's be real clear about this, okay? I'm God. You're my creation. I've shown myself to be God. Prove myself to you. I soon only begotten Son. Come on, the day of Pentecost has come. The Holy Spirit has come. I've raised the dead. I, my Son told you He has all power, amen. In heaven and in the earth, He's made the declaration. He's proving he's who he say he is. And for those of you who have experienced his salvation, his saving power, you ought to know. Because you didn't save yourself. Am I right? And then he tells us now your responsibility is to teach every other, everybody else in the nation, in the nations of the world what I have taught you and who I am to you, right? Okay, so he's, this is an excuse. So then he goes and says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, uh, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Yes, Stephanie. Mr. J Before you get down into there, I just wanted to say, because you made a comment that, um, and I just want to provide some, some support for our listeners, our future listeners. You had made a statement that you're not preaching about, you know, like God wanted to kill us and, and destroy us and be destructive. And I just wanted to say that you know, we've learned that success leaves clues. And mm -hmm. I mean, if we just will take a moment to backtrack and look at the scriptures um, with the children of Israel, them being in captivity, you know, them being um, released from captivity and then put in captivity again because mm -hmm. of what they did, um, Noah and the ark, uh, mm -hmm. Just many things that we can look at when God says, okay, my creation that I created for me, you know, to worship, you have gotten off and you have went astray. Mm -hmm. And so he brings us back in alignment with him. And we have seen this um, throughout the scriptures. And so the evidence is there if we will take the time to read study and understand and also like every play that came um back in the old testament that it was directed towards a god a specific god and so god is very clear about who he is you know what he can do and what he expects from his creation mm -hmm. and so it would just be you know really good for us to to remember you know where we have been and where we have come from collectively as a body of Christ and 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 understand that once you start making golden calves and graven images I mean it's gonna be some destruction in the land because he is a jealous God and no God comes before him yeah. and so in the beginning of the pandemic he shut down every other avenue yes education economics you know yeah. all of it was shut down people couldn't even watch their favorite shows because they weren't filming no more I mean Hollywood yeah. was shut down yeah. and so it just reminded me of those plagues and how he attacked every other God that yes. was, you know, trying to operate at that particular time. So I just wanted to put that out there, food for thought. Absolutely. And Jesus told us the, the, the two things and he made, he combined them to be as equal value. Love God with all of your heart, your soul and your mind. And he said, and love thy neighbor as you love yourself. So here again, successfully love God and love people, okay? 
You can do those things. How do I get to doing that? God is love, okay? Submit to God, resist the enemy, and he'll flee. And so all of these things are here and being dealt with. Uh, and here he's going to begin describing some things. So definitely for going back into the Old Testament, because history repeats itself. And the Old Testament is really revelation of the New Testament. Okay. And then Apostle Paul had to make it very clear to them that grace isn't here that sin would abound. Grace is here so that we would have the ability of the holy influence of God upon our life, the government of God upon us, that we would be able to live according to the expectations of God. Okay. Yeah. And so he goes on and he talks about in verse 22, he says, the, you've, you, you've, you've got vain imaginations. We're supposed to cast down vain imaginations and every thought that exhausts itself above the knowledge of Christ. Right? That's what the word of God tells us to do. But he says here, but be, you became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. 22 says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They became fools. Listen, 23 says, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-feeted beasts and creeping things. He says, you guys have taken who I am and aligned me with you all as creation. Come on. You, you don't, you're you not, uh, uh, Hollow would be my name. You, you, you're not setting me aside from every other thing. I'm God. But you're acting as though I'm like one of your friends or something. And who I am doesn't doesn't matter. What I think, what I what I expect from you doesn't matter. That's what he's saying to them here. Okay, he says you guys have been, been fooled. And then he says, wherefore God also gave them up. He says, okay, grace shifting. Okay, I'm gonna let you go on with your bad self. I'm going to go on. I'm going to let you have it. Okay. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. Okay. Physical and also in a moral sense. Impurity. Lustful living. Okay. People to have impure motives. Now, we... He froze up, Bishop. And receive themselves for the due penalty for their error. Mm -hmm. That's how the English Bible. King James says the same thing. Mm -hmm. So they, they turned away from God's way. Yeah, they turned away from God's ways and went on doing what they wanted to do instead of God's ways. What they done, That's they right. took the word of God and changed it around to benefit themselves and their own lust and, and things of the world instead of things of God. Mm -hmm. And that's what I got out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any that's, comments? That's good, Mother. Uh huh. It sounds like yes, the world today. It yeah, sounds like. Uh, Go ahead. Yes. It does. And they said. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so they would do all not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. Yeah. They, turn they are full of out. envy, murder, murder, spite, deceit, malice. They just mad. They just, mm -hmm. you know, that's what the world is today. People killing each other, murdering each other, mm -hmm. and everything. But if they did what God wants, it wouldn't be like that. 
they just change the word of God to fit their own natural minds mm -hmm. because they have a, mind, a carnal mind and not a mind of God. Mm -hmm. Just changed it all. God, that's not God. God is love. Love one another. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And mm -hmm. treat people with kindness and love. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take over, but th this got yeah. good to me. And I studied it all week yeah. long. I was excited. About tonight. Been waiting on. <laughs> that's good. good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's what we wanted. You not you you never apologize for your excitement and your joy mm -hmm. in the word. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we are supposed to be doing. Um. Yes. And so that does, it sounds like the environment, the world where we are today, um, you know, things that are going on, the, the calamities that are amongst the earth right now. And even in that, and we go back and we say, um, when he was talking about how they uh, changed the image of God to be made like corrupt, to be made like to corruptible man. Um, God is the creator of all things, okay? We can't create the, the, the earth. I mean, we can't create uh, clouds and, and heavens and, and we, we, we can't create those things. And so how dare you with your self-righteous self put yourself on the same level Amen. as God, the creator of all things. And so like you might like um, mother was saying, and she read all the way down, um, you know, talking about their lust and um, how they didn't do and follow the formula. God has already given us a formula and he told us, cast down those vain imaginations. You know, and again, we have evidence of this. You remember when um, they, all the people were on one accord Come on. And, and they started building the tower to the to the heavens. OK. And uh, God, God looked down and said, hey, wait a minute. OK. And so understanding those things and knowing that we have to cast down those vain imaginations. That's a part of the formula that God has already given us. Go ahead, Deacon Terry. Would you finish say something? Oh, OK. OK. Bishop Gerald is back. Wonderful. Oh God. <laughs> we holding I'm it down. For it. Thank you. We're we're talking we're about <laughs> we're talking about that wrath, right? Yes. And uh vain imaginations. And we have been uh instructed to cast down vain imaginations, okay? So we've got to know how to how to deal with that accordingly. Let me get my Bible back open. And so where do we leave off at? Bishop, you were talking about, you know, how to deal with these things. You were in verse 24. Okay. And leading into 25. Okay. And we just kind of backed up a little bit um, and talked about just different things that we see going on in the world today. And um, Mother Randall uh, read from her Bible and talking about just the uh, lustful ways of how men, you know, uh, unnaturally not wanting to lay with women. I mean, it's a lot. This yeah, we're getting there. Got on we haven't got there yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we got to just be honest and say these are things that are going on. And this is what the Apostle Paul was teaching them. Uh, concerning them getting to a place of justification, getting right with God, okay? And, and, and we see these things, we got to say, this is not right. And we can't uphold right, I mean, wrong, okay? We have responsibility to have conversations when we know these things are not pleasing to God. Otherwise, we're going to end up seeing the wrath of God. That makes sense to you? And so he goes on and he's talking about, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, right? 
who changed the truth of God into a lie. Oh my, what does that look like? When you hear that, what does that make you think about turning the truth of God into a lie? We, for me, Bishop, I see it as like, what's right is wrong and what's wrong is right. Okay. You know, okay. like um, some of the principles or some of the um, uh, standards you know, that okay. we have, you okay. know, it don't take all of that or this new school, you know, okay. or, um, this is 21st old. century now. Yes. Things have changed. Things and have changed. Yeah. We modern now. Go ahead. Deacon Terry. Yeah. I was just going to say, you know, we can't be so passive and go along with, with sin. I mean, if you go along with sin, you, you just saying you agree with it. You agree with what's going on. I mean, we got to be bold enough to tell it, speak up when we see unrighteousness, when we see people that saying they uh saying they for God, but they they not acknowledging God. They going by doing what they want to do and calling it right. Okay. And that's where we come in at. We have to be knowledgeable enough and bold enough to to bring uh, correction out of love to, to them people. We can't go along with people, uh, you know, no matter how close they are, our friends, our relative, or whatever. When you know the truth, you need to speak the truth. Okay. And, and they and, might not even know, you know, they might not even wear, they, that might be their truth. Okay. You That's know. very good. And, and there's repercussions. It's called the wrath of God. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mother Randall, do you have your hand up? And then I see you, Mother Irma. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. And he said they exchanged the truth of God for a lie. This is what I got out of it. They took what God taught them, which is love and understanding and worship him, and they twisted it into them own selves, changed his word, where they could drink and lust after the flesh and do different things like today. Let's go have a drink. It's okay. You know, mm -hmm. people think that's all right. And if mm -hmm. you're a kingdom, that's not all right. That ain't what God wants you to do. All and right, people man. need to learn that. So these people back yeah. here change the word of God to suit themselves so they can just lust the way they want to do things instead of doing the righteous things of God. Okay. Which he is teaching us to do. And that's, that's what I right. got out of it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes, Mother yes, Irma. <laughs> well, what, what I saw also was that this was an this was an area where man became lovers of themselves. And um everything that man thought he wanted at that point to satisfy himself, he did. He started loving himself as opposed to the creator of him. And so they started doing uh, the things that were not of God, but because it satisfied them, they found it to be okay. You know, mm -hmm. um, I think they just took, you know how you, you just go too far with something. They started off maybe still remembering who God was, but once they changed that mindset, changed and they started catapulting, it was gone. Okay. It was gone. It was just like when the enemy wraps around you, kind of tips you away from the group. Okay. Once you start going, you rolling downhill. Okay. That thing gets away from you, and this is where snowball the, effect. Mm -hmm, huh? This is where the people then were. They just started look like losing it. Okay. So okay. that's where I am with that. So if we are to look at things. Can we say, in this twenty first century, the state of the world doesn't mean everybody, but for the for a large part of people that's inhabiting the earth. They've lost it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've lost it. The honor, the respect. Uh, people just bold about their sinful nature. Uh, what what God says is sin and try to make everybody else say nothing's wrong. But God has said something with it. That's not right. Okay. And we're going to see even more in the scripture. Shondell says, yes, she feels that way. You know, uh, Tanisha, I didn't get a chance. Your comment went away. It said this this day, 
the believers are not woke or people are waking up to the truth. They, I, I want to, I don't want to use worldly words. I want to say they need to become conscious. And I know it's a word, but I'm, I'm trying to, because there's a, there's a, a set of people out there that's talking about stay woke, stay woke, stay woke. And I want to use what the Bible says. And it says that they were not conscious. Okay. The consciousness of God. So that's what I want to use because I believe that his word is spirit and his word is life. Okay. That's one of the other things. Tanisha, you, you, what you're saying is right. You're exactly right. I just, this is just a teaching. Oh, no. So that's what they say about us. Okay. That we not woke. Okay. That we not woke. That's ah. what they say about us. Not okay. using that. You know, that's what they say about us. We're not woke. We sleep. Because oh, we okay. still believing the truth abiding in the word we mm. they consider us to be in bondage okay I, when that's what you know it's like a reversal that's that's what i meant sorry yeah 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 that's good thank you for clarifying that and you are absolutely right you got a whole generation of people that are saying that and saying stay woke and they're telling them we're not woke you know that that things have changed you know nobody you know, go by that things anymore, that the Bible is irrelevant. God, you know, uh, understands if they do confess that he's real, he loves everybody and he does, but you're twisting the truth. He, he hates sin though. And sin is missing the mark. Uh, sin is, 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 is not living uh, to the best of your ability to the expectations of God. Stephanie? Bishop, I, I uh, so in this area right here where we're talking about how we take the truth and change it um, into a lie, um, I, I'm going to bring up a subject because uh -oh. it's, just, it's just out there. And okay. uh, <laughs> uh, um, we, we, we're not able to pick our own sex oh, my. and our own gender. Um, you, you born a female with a female part, you a female in the mm -hmm. Um, that's converting the truth, uh, who God decreed that we were before the foundations of the world. You can go back to Jeremiah, you can go back to the beginning, go, you know, Jeremiah one and five. We, we have some scripture references, but for me, I thought about that because okay. when I looked at that word, to change it from the truth to, to a lie. And it said deceitful precepts. Okay. Um, intentional falsehood. Mm -hmm. You know, well, we just let them choose who they want to be. No. That's 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 not God that God has already uh declared, decreed, you know, that's what his word is for. And so Again, just different things that, that we have going on in today's society. Um, and the antidote for that is you've taught us, Bishop, you know, get born again. You, you know, uh, yeah. that's how we can deal with some of those things. But for me, that, that is a huge agenda right now. It is. Uh, and so I don't, I don't know if I ease that in there or not. But Well, anyway. well it's it's it's. It's orchestrated by Satan, who is the master deceiver, and it's the highest level of deception one can walk in. That's a level of deception that is wicked, okay? It's absolutely wicked. And so um, the grace of God, the love of God, the power of God is there to address those things if that happens to be a, a, a attack of the enemy against you, okay? Just like anybody else would have to call upon the name of the Lord. We all have to call upon the name of the Lord, whether it be for lying, whether it be for alcoholism, drug addictions, whatever it may be. And I have to believe that when I call upon the name of the Lord, he has delivered from the thing that I call upon the name of the Lord for him to deliver me from. And if it doesn't 
manifest itself. I'm going to continue to call upon the name of the Lord until it does. And I want to put myself and set myself in a place of accountability and instruction until I receive that. Because a person who truly wants to, to be, um, um, to receive correction, sets themselves in a position to be corrected. Okay. Regardless of what you're saying out of your mouth, your behavior shows whether or not what you're saying out of your mouth is adding up. Okay. And as he taught, he used the word, no excuse. There's no excuse. Without excuse, we must begin saying and believing that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And when Jesus uh, hung, bled, and died on that cross, and he got up out of that grave on the third day, he got up with all power in his hand. He got up with power in heaven and in the earth. Listen at this, and also in hell. Okay, so there's nothing in hell, in the earth, or in the heavenlies, and he's been set above, Pastor Sam, help me out now, he's been set above all principalities, all powers, all rules of darkness, all spiritual wickedness in high places, so there is nothing that his name and the power that God had delegated to him cannot deal with, and the only reason why it's not dealt with is because of unbelief, okay? And so we've got to address, because remember, it's by faith we're saved. By grace, we're saved through faith. And all things are possible to those who believe. Okay? And so we can't make excuses. We've got to address, there's a faith challenge here. What, how do you get faith? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. If they start hearing something other than the gospel, oh, God understands, well, this is, this is the 21st century now, you know, just as a way, way of life today, you know, and this is, this is, this is a new, new way of living. This is the new normal. If they start hearing that, you know what happens? They begin to believe that, and what they believe, they, they begin to behave that way. Does that make sense? So we can't become ashamed of the gospel, okay? Had to be good stewards of the gospel and believe in his power to do what God sent it in the earth to do. Do y'all agree with me about that? So that requires consistency. Listen, even if it's rejected, we cannot conform we continue to love, but our, our, and you're not going to manipulate me to change my convictions or the truth, but I just won't come around. All right. I love you though. I love you. I love you even the more. Okay. Because now the enemy starts working in, in, into, because really what's happening now is rebellion. And the Satan is the author of rebellion. Okay, now you're rebelling. Okay, so now you know that this is, is demonic activity going on. Okay, yeah. Pastor Sam, I see your mic's out. You ain't said nothing tonight. Come on in here. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I want to pick it back off uh, what you're saying and what Deacon Terry said. We have to be. Uh, got to be able to be in that place to correct the error because there are two messages that's been distorted in the word of God, the message of grace and the message of love. Mm. And that message of love is uh, what's allowing people to uh, accept everything because okay. they think that this is a way of showing love and the message of grace has been distorted because, uh, because of grace you can do what you want to do and God's going to forgive you for it. Okay. So those two messages have been distorted. 
grace comes to assist you to get done what God planned for you to do. Yes. That's and God, very, very I mean, good. and uh, love is not love. Love is God. God is love. You got that backwards. Okay. They've been using it backwards. So you accept uh, alternative lifestyle. You accept sin and say it's okay because grace going to cover you. No, that's mercy. Mercy yeah. covers you until you get get into agreement with the word of God and grace shows up to help you, assist you to carry it out. Yes. So that message has been distorted. And so, and like you were saying, Bishop, we can't be ashamed of the gospel. When we hear those errors, we got to be in a place where we are bold enough to say, that is wrong. You are off. Okay. okay. And we have to stand up in those places. And like you also said, we can't be afraid if they're going to reject us. We got to put more emphasis and put more belief in the seed that we are sowing, that this seed would not return void. That's good. We, and, and so our job is to pray for the ground. When we plant the seed, pray for the ground, that it would get into the ground and do what it's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. That's what we got to come up in our faith. We can't be concerned how they're going to receive it. I, I, they may, may not even want to talk to them anymore. We can't be worried about that. Plant the seed. It don't mm-hmm. matter. Just plant it. And let God do his job. Okay. So that's, so that's believing. That's believing that he watches over his word to perform it, right? Right. And so now it becomes our responsibility to pray those prayers of faith, right? God, you watch over your word to perform it. I have obeyed you in a sower. I've sowed yes. the word. And you are the one that bring forth the harvest. I'm the Lord of the seed and you're the Lord of the harvest. You've given me to be, be uh, 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 um, responsible or a good steward over the seed of the word that you have yes. sown in me, that you have left all of us to live by. Now, when we sow that word, you are the one that's responsible to produce the harvest from it. That's right. But when we're disobedient in sowing the word, we cannot keep begging God, doing thing, and God to say to you, did you sow a seed? Had the seed been sown? Okay. And then yeah. when the prayer of faith is, is that God, the word has been sown, and now I thank you that the harvest is being produced. That's good. And Bishop. Yeah. Bishop, I remember uh, Pastor T uh, delivered a message once, and it stays with me. Uh, she was ministering on uh, when Jesus spoke to Lazarus to come mm-hmm. forth. And she was talking about Jesus had enough faith to speak to the dead that the dead got up. He, he wasn't worried about concern that the dead going to hear what he said, but when he spoke, oh. He had enough faith for the dead to come up. That's wow. the kind of faith we're supposed to have. The God <laughs> kind of faith. That's good. When I speak to a thing, I'm expecting something to happen. I'm not concerned. Is did they hear? Or is they doing everything they're supposed to do? Uh, or do you think they had enough faith? Because a lot of times we have uh, didn't do what we supposed to do. Well, you know, they're not living so living like they're supposed to. I don't know if they say so connect with what I'm saying. You okay. can't be concerned about that. You okay. should have enough God kind of faith that when you speak to the dead, it's supposed to get up. <laughs> okay. Amen. That's that's having God kind of faith, isn't it right? Yes. And, and uh, I was studying, I was led to, to look up on some things with David, uh, with all this crazy stuff that's going on in the world. I was led to read uh, David and Goliath. And I started uh, doing some word search. Uh, when David was, was uh, dealing with Goliath, he said to uncircumcised, uncircumcised Philistine. Philistine. Uncircumcised Philistine. And I said, hey, I need to go look up these words. That uncircumcised and that Philistine. When I looked those two words up, this was a unforbidden thing that David was speaking to. Mm-hmm. He was going on his faith in God and the power in God and what everything God had revealed to him. He was with me when I killed the bear. He was with me when I killed the lion. So 
He was putting his faith in God, not in his strength, because he said in his word, not by power, not by might, but by the spirit of God. He was relying on the spirit of God. That's what we're supposed to be doing, relying on the spirit of God. He'll reveal to you who he is. He'll mm -hmm. reveal to you how the power operates in you. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. That's how we're supposed to be looking at these giants in the world today. By using his name, using his power, and using his blood. The word, the power, and the blood. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And but if we're, looking at, if we're looking at the, the condition of the world, oh, the world is falling apart. Oh, woe is me. Oh, God, come and help us. He gave us the power. He has revealed to you, you have the power to decree and declare and call these things what it's supposed to be. So when we see the errors of the ways in people, we got to get up and say what needs to be said. Mm -hmm. And we need to speak to this earth as well. Mm -hmm. That's how things going to get back in order. But if we are, are in the cave hiding, like Jeremiah did, come on, ain't nothing going to change, y'all. Yeah. And here, here's the truth to that. When y'all go back, and you guys are many, many of you are LCU students, when you've been delegated authority, you have to make sure that you stay submitted to authority. And that is where those that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven. See, we gotta, we gotta operate under authority so that we can have authority. The Bible says, uh, resist the devil, he'll flee, okay? If we're not submitted to God, then the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness, spirit in our places doesn't have to submit to us. It's going to church and clapping our hands and shouting and all of that and then going out and, and not um submitting to the instructions of God renders us a people to be having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof okay now this is just the truth this is in my opinion this is what the bible says so uh, Jesus stayed in the position of the authority because he stayed submitted to his father he said, not my will, but thy will be done. I only came to do the will of my father that sent me. When we start, as this verse says here, we got just a few more minutes. We got to be done today. Boy, y'all teaching good tonight. It says this, this in verse 26, um, they, they serve, they worshiped, verse 25, I'm sorry, changed the truth of God into a lie, worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, but even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over a reprobate mind to those things which are not convenient. Be filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisper, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boaster, inventors of evil, things disobedient to, uh, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And so that brings all of these things into play. And we have to be honest and say, are these things going on in the world today? And so same people doing these that are listed, the first thing come out of their mouth is God. And so 
we we have to say hold on you're saying that you you love god relationship with god how can this be so they continue to think this way behave this way okay and feel this way and that goes for me that goes for you that goes for everybody okay a person speaking uh, wrong about another person as a believer i'm gonna say oh, hold on we don't need to say that. We don't need to talk like that. I don't care who it is. That go for me, that go for you, that go for anybody. Am I right? We're not just talking about, you know, the things that, you know, we want to jump on the back one. We're talking about just period. Okay. And all these things going on in, in the world today. Um uh, We've got to have conversations. We've got to talk about it. And listen, we've got to hold one another accountable. It's easy to become conformed to this world. You're in environments where people just do those things so fluidly. Okay? That's a word that they use now. Oh, I'm fluid. What, what mean you fluid? You go with however the wind blow? However, whichever way the river flow? What, what you mean? Stephanie, you had your hand. You were about to say something. I just want to piggyback off of what Pastor Samantha was saying. Yes, we need to speak to these things. We need to decree and declare, and we need to speak life into these situations and expect the word of God to manifest. Also, the second part of that is when we see this in the scripture above, it said that these people had now become the worshiper of um the creature and no longer the worshiper of the creator mm -hmm. and so we have to be able to recognize when this is going on so when you see all of these things that you that you just mentioned in the scripture they are now worshiping the creature and no longer the creator and so we got to set those things back in place and that comes by way of teaching and acknowledging what scripture says believing that the gospel is the power of god unto salvation and so being reminded of the great commission of going out and teaching our nations and baptizing them in the father the son and the holy spirit teaching them to observe things whatsoever i have have commanded you we speak to them we give life to them but we also need to be teaching people and having conversations and making them aware that if you continue in this way this is what is going to happen mm -hmm. yeah yeah as i said prayer also comes an in instruction because i can sit and i can pray and i can bind and loose and then don't come and teach. That's what God, oh, he was God. You know that intercession was going on in heaven, but he said, I gotta come out of heaven and I gotta send someone, okay? in in the flesh to go and teach them, to be an example and to make sure that they come to a place of understanding. That's why Jesus became the word in the flesh because they had the word, okay? They had, they had what God's expectations were, but then he had to take it to the next level. And so when we come out of prayer and when we've prayed and we, 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 we spoken uh, to, the, to, the, to the spirits, we've got to come down and now we've got to teach people that they come in alignment with what we pray. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I know you all have heard this a million times and I have to go here because it is, it is where the spirit is leading me. You know, the situation with me and those deer for uh, five years ago. And mm -hmm. when I told you God took the deer away from me and I was so wrapped up then, my mind was not in one piece, I believe in a way because I was so caught up with the deer, 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 deer. And they ran through the yard, just ran rampant in my yard until God said to me, no, no more. And I mean, took it and said it to me that way. And I, and, I, and I give this testimony because it is important. I could have lost my mind. He saved me. He came back again, put his hand on me, told me, no, he created those deer. Those deer 
I was putting too much thought in that. Mm -hmm. He was the creator of the deer. Okay. So he said no more. So he took them from me for five years. And I have to tell this testimony because it is so important to me. He saved my mind during mm -hmm. that time. Yes, ma'am. Now, now it's the sixth year. He's allowed them to run across the yard. I see him every now and again, okay. but they don't do anything to me or for me. Okay. I just see him. Thank you, beautiful. And they go on their way. Okay. But I was in a bad way when he took them from me. Yeah. And I had to go back to him, the creator. I had to okay. look back at him. And so I, I'm, I, I don't know when I'll say it again, but that's it for this. That's year. excellent. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm serious. He, he saved me again from that. Thank you. Okay. Amen. Barbara, your hand was up. Oh, yes, sir. As we, you was reading down where he said a lot of their lust went from women and then women to women, men to men. How do you handle things like that? How do you handle things like that? Um, well, I mean, you, you know, you see a same sex couple and you know that the word, they, they take that word that you just read and twisted it to fit themselves to say that God approves of that. Does he? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have to say to them, where does God say that in the word that he approves of that? You know, well, it, they would read that scripture right there and twist it like God uh, to a lie. That's what I'm saying. And uh, a lot of people have twisted that verse right there and made God a lie instead of the truth and thinking that it's okay for them to have same sex marriages and stuff like that. How do yeah. you deal with stuff like that when you come across it? Well, again, just let it go. Just uh, well, no, you, you share the truth of God's word with that. And in the situation, and then you yes. trust God to let it, let it be the power of God unto salvation. Um, um, in that, I begin to ask them because some people's understanding of salvation is just simply because they're emotional about God. They want God to approve of them. So they say that they're saved, but they hadn't literally had an encounter with Jesus. Okay. Uh -huh. The Bible well, says, know, some women the Bible saying, says oh. that when you, when you are born again, you're a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. And so I, 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 I will be listening to the Holy Spirit to ask the right question. Uh, I don't want to become offended yes, or judgmental. I want to allow God's spirit right. to direct me to the question or the word of God that can bring about deliverance to them and healing and restoration to them, okay? And just because someone say that I love God doesn't mean that they're born of God. Some people, it's their desire to be loved by God and they're emotional about God wanting his acceptance, okay? But that doesn't mean that uh, they've been born of God, okay? Had an experience with Jesus yeah. Christ, who is the only one who's able to supernaturally yeah. save them from what has come to destroy them. The other yeah. thing I would say, uh, maybe that situation is, you do you love God? Yeah. Well, Jesus said, do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my savior. Well, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That means his instructions that he has given to us in the word of God. And then allow the Holy Spirit to bring conviction, not condemnation, but conviction unto them. That makes sense? And so yes, listening, yes. just listening to God, listen, don't come overwhelmed or like that. Keep for the right question to ask that the Holy Spirit can give you the answer or, or the scripture or what to do in order to bring them to a place of, of, uh, of conviction so that the Holy Spirit can deliver them and heal them and restore them. Yes, sir. 
I agree with that. Okay. Thank you. One thing we are not with this guy is dogmatic. Does that make sense to you? We are not dogmatic. We're not dogmatic about any portion of the gospel because God does not give us authority over a person's will. We got authority over everything that he created except one another's will. Okay? One another's okay. will. And um, like I said, we are not dogmatic with this gospel. This is a gospel of love, but it's not a gospel of compromise. Okay? Man, that's our time today. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Man, we got part three of this teaching coming up on Sunday. And uh, we're just going to get into some other places. It's, it's so good for me. And we're going to find out his grace is sufficient because there's grace for this place. And uh, also get into some depth about what that looks like. Okay, what that looks like. Because I know that sometimes we think that the grace is going to make it just really easy, easy, easy. But it's going to cause, see, say I'm too shaking the head. Mm -mm. It's going to cause a separation between the flesh and the spirit, the bone and the marrow. Okay. Your will and God's will. Okay. But through his grace, it's, it will happen. And it will come out amazing, absolutely amazing. Okay, amen. So we're gonna talk about that. And thank you all for all of your wisdom and your experiences and testimonies. My God, God is amazing God. Father, we thank you tonight for all that you've said, all you've done, every testimony. God, all of the wisdom all of the revelation and, and enlightening of our understanding shared with each and every one of us. We've had different life experiences, Lord. So you talked on where we, where we're going, and where we are. And we appreciate that so much. Thank you. You are the God of all creation and the God of every nation. And we bless your name. We bless your name, Father, in Jesus name. Amen.